Gold Squad TV. Alright, so to get back on the sports tip, I didn't do a video about the Lakers and Celtics last night. Um, in case you guys are wondering, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you raw and uncut. They didn't deserve a recap or video last night. Um I'm already to the point to where I'm on I'm only gonna pretty much talk about the games we win. Cause it seems like we're never gonna get above five hundred and actually win consistently. Um I knew the game was over. I was watching the game. It was about forty seven forty two Lakers. They were up forty seven forty two. The game was still close, and then we couldn't get a stop. We kept getting it closer and get a stop. Couldn't get a stop. Couldn't get a stop. Next thing you know, once that once I turned off the TV, the minute the Lakers just pretty much ended that half on a run, I already knew the third quarter we weren't going to do shit. Um, the Lakers are not a good team this year, but they're also not a team you want to go underhanded or shorthanded against on the road when you're about 3 billion thousand miles away from home. Um, that said, it's no excuse. It's no excuse. Absolutely no excuse. I'm tired of the same excuses all the coaches do or I'm tired of all the same excuses I hear about the Celtics team. Um, one minute they're great with Trey Jalen. All this, I've come so disengaged. I've become so disengaged as a Celtics fan lately. It's not even funny. The same old stuff. Some of you Celtics fans don't deserve a winning franchise. You guys want to get rid of anybody with any type of talent. Y'all want to believe the Kool-Aid that Jalen and Jason can't play together well. Y'all want to believe the Kool-Aid that Jalen has to go. If it's not that, you guys think that we're going to actually win with Jason Tatum being our only guy on the team that's actually worth, you know, riding behind. Not to mention, you know, the Boston media creates dissension. So, I've become so disengaged with the with the play of this team. And I've been so disengaged with the way the team's being managed by the coach. And how things, things are being coached and, and the way we're going about, you know, scheme and schematics, inconsistencies. Um, my inks goes all the way back to last year, last season, and even last season felt like I had a lot more hope than this season. I feel like this season has no hope. Last year we had hope. COVID attacked the team. Um, a, a lot of players just didn't play up to par. The guys were hurt. I wasn't really too disappointed. As bad as it was watching some of those empty arena games, it wasn't that bad. This is bad. We have no hope for our young players. Um, it seems like this coach is hell-bent on playing proven veterans, which is somewhat opposite to Brad Stevens. But, um... Hold on. Somewhat opposite to Brad Stevens. However, um, I like balance. We don't have balance. We only play seven deep on rotation. We only play the young guys when we have a huge lead. Uh, this old school mentality of like you have to earn your spot on the team and earn your minutes is kind of annoying. Uh, I'm not saying you got to give guys minutes for the sake of just giving them minutes. But listen, man, you drafted a guy 14th overall last year and drafted a guy 26th overall. And both those guys played a decent and bigger part last year than they did this year. You see what happens when Peyton Pritchard gets minutes. He put up a big game against Portland. Mind you, 
you know what I mean? Some of it was garbage time points, but the kid has done it against elite competition. This isn't a uh, situation where Peyton Pritchard doesn't know how to play basketball. Has he been in a slump? Yes. Does he suck all of a sudden? I highly doubt it. Aaron Naismith, I've been on and off with. I've kind of almost somewhat gave up on. But then again, it's kind of like we drafted him 14th overall. There's no reason. There's no reason he should be getting less minutes than Josh Richardson. The reason why I say Josh Richardson, I like Josh. But here's the problem with Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson is a 27, 28-year-old veteran in this league. Is he needed on his team? Yes. But I'm not playing him more minutes than a guy that I know I'm going to build and have to be a building block on his team going forward. Aaron Naismith and Peyton Pritchard were supposed to have jumps this year. And instead, they've been relegated to the bench, and all we do is get passes to a coach that has never proven anything. Because that's the thing we forget. Ime Udoka, for being an assistant coach, has never coached the NBA team as a head coach. He's unproven. How does this man think, get the authority to show and put on a roster or have the type of backing on, on a roster, basically, to talk about, well, you haven't really proven anything under my watch? Dude, you haven't proven anything in this league. Those guys have proven more than you have. You might have been a decent role player in the NBA. I get it. You know, you played under Pop. But are you talking about as a coach? You haven't really done anything. You haven't done anything to prove that you're some coach of the year candidate. As a matter of fact, I could come up with many amounts of games or I see a lot of bad coaching. Like last night. You know, no adjustments in the second half. Just come out with the same defense and get your ass kicked. I mean, I don't know. Seen this way too many times. And the play, the, it's all the players have to step up. The players have to step up. The players have to step up. The players will only play within the scheme that has been bought to them defensively based on what the coach is selling them. Because the coach will not play a player that goes against the scheme when it comes to defense. He'll bench them. Unless you're a star. So, y'all can believe what y'all want to believe. You want to sit there and act as if, like, these guys are credible. This guy is a credible coach. I think he'll be gone in two years. I've seen enough. I've seen enough of this team. People want to trade everyone. Right now, at the rate, we're going to lose Jalen and Jason within the next few years. I don't think it's any of their faults. It's just a failure to build a team around it's a failure to build a team around your best players because your your owner is too cheap, all right? Your owner is too cheap. You have a coach that's inexperienced and really is just there for Jason Tatum. And you got the other guys in the team who, for lack of a better word, Come with it one day and don't come with it the next day. The most consistent guy has been unfairly criticized and also dealing with a hamstring injury and dealing with COVID. And yet it's his fault that he needs to fall in line if we're going to win a title. It's just the utter disrespect so many fans have and have no type of idea or understanding for a team. You know, you guys don't deserve a championship. Now, they could very well win against the Clippers tonight. But if we don't, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just the team we have, man. We don't, we can't seem to put any type of consistency. And other teams are getting better, y'all. So, we'll see. I'm going to keep one eye on the team and one eye on not paying attention. Um, to, to me, this email Doga experience, Experiment so far, or Doga, excuse me, isn't working. Gold Squad TV, leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you guys think. Gold Squad TV.